Yay, welcome back. Okay, so this is a continuation on our last part. In the previous part of the video, we produced this sheet metal component in Autodesk Inventor. And we also went off and made a drawing of it. This time, we're going to repeat that process using Fusion 360. So we'll make a 3D model that can be flat patterned. And then we're also going to produce a, um, a drawing from it. So let's get to it. In Fusion 360, we'll go ahead and we'll make a design. And before we get started, it's always good to save it. And we'll say Control S to save and give it a name. We'll say Sheet Metal Rail and click Save. Cool. And now we can close the data panel. Okay, so in Fusion 360, um, so far what we've done is we've done some solid modeling, which uses this tab here. In the design environment, there are a few tabs. We've actually got solid, surface, mesh, sheet metal, plastic, and utilities. We'll go ahead and we're going to work in the sheet metal tab today. So uh, I should remember most of the dimensions from when we did the video uh, about the in Inventor. We'll go ahead and we'll start off by creating a sketch. So we'll click sketch, pick the ground plane, and we'll start off by making a rectangle. So two point rectangle. And we said that it was one ten long. And to switch between these dimensions, you can hit tab. Um, and we'll hit 37 for the width. I think it was 37. Let's check. Now I'm paranoid. Mm. No, 34. Oh. 34. Lovely. Great. Okay, so we'll click finish sketch. And now um, we want to define the thickness of this. Now, from the last episode, we saw that the thickness was 1.42. Um, so we're gonna come along here and before we make a flange out of this, we are going to come to sheet metal rules to define the thickness. Now, uh, in uh, Fusion 360, you would define your rules. So here we've got say steel, four millimeter steel, three millimeter steel, six millimeter. And each time you'll define things like the K factor, the thickness, uh, you know, how you treat uh, mitres, rips, seams, etc. Um, in this case, we are just going to make a duplicate of one of these that are close, and then we are going to um, use that to define our sheet metal part. So we'll come here to steel 2mm, right-click it, and say new rule. And now we're going to rename this one. So we'll say steel 1.43 millimeters, and put in a thickness of 1.43, and we'll leave the K factor. I'm not quite sure what that is for 1.43 mil thick steel. If you know, let me know. Um, here we go. And yeah, these are the rules that govern bend compensations, corner conditions. We'll just leave those as default because they're actually parametric. Um, we'll click save and click close. And just because I'm paranoid, make sure that we've chosen that one. Uh, I think that's it. Right. Okay, cool. We'll start off by creating a flange. In Inventor, you just specify a face. In this one, we're picking a flange. So we'll click flange and pick this face here. And now uh, here we get to choose what side the thickness is going. Uh, the uh, operations, is it a um, new body or is it a, uh, <laughs> adding to an existing body? And what sheet metal rule we're using. So we'll click sheet metal rule and we'll come down and we'll choose steel 1.43 and click OK. Good stuff. So there is our fearsome first panel. Next, we'll go ahead and we'll define the vertical portion here. So from memory, this is 37. Hey, brain's not completely cheesed today. We'll say flange, grab that end face there and bring it up 37 mil. Good stuff. Next, we wanna put these side flanges, these little winglets on the side. We'll leave out the hems for the moment. We'll just put in these wings. So to do that, uh, well, we'll first measure the height of the point of the wings. So we'll say that they're 11.5. And we will say choo -choo -choo, flange that edge there, that edge there, that edge. Oops, not that one. Hold down shift to unselect an edge. This one here and this one here. And now we can whoop, bring them in. So what height were they? They were 11.5. Beautiful. Okay, so next we're gonna have a look at creating hems. Now, hems in Fusion 360 are a little bit tricky. Um, hems in this model are a very, very tight turn there. And uh, so we've got an internal radius of like one millimeter gap there, very, very sharp. But we don't actually have a hem tool in Fusion 360. 
So we have to improvise. Now, I'd love to say that you can come along here and you can, uh, you know, make a sketch of the uh, the hem there and then extrude it along, but it won't actually flat pattern. So we're going to have to use a workaround um, to create our hem in this model. Now, uh, it is a little bit convoluted, but bear with me. I promise you we'll get through it. So we'll start off by clicking flange here. And we're going to pick these two edges here. And we're going to make a flange of arbitrary length in there. We'll say 10 now. Um, now, while that doesn't matter, this does. Click override rules and make sure that you click bend override and change the bend radius to 0 0.5, representing half of the gap in our hem. So we'll click OK. And now we've got well, half of a hem. <laughs> That's very long. Uh, we'll go ahead and click flange again. And pick these two lower lips and drag it down. Lovely, five mil down. And as before, we'll click override rules, click bend override, bend radius 0 0.5 mil. Good stuff, good stuff. So, as you can see, this is some pretty chunky hems. <laughs> uh, these don't look like the hems of our real life at all. So, all that's left to actually do is to bring in these faces. Um, closer to the edge here, which means getting rid of this intermittent, intervening material. So we'll use our measuring tool, inspect, to measure this edge here. And we can see that it's 6.14 millimeters long. So then it actually becomes really, really easy. All we need to do is select the faces we want to move, come over to the solid, solid tab, click the move copy command, Make sure that faces are selected. If it's at, if it isn't, click faces and make sure you select these faces. And then let's drag it in 6.14 mil. So we'll say x distance negative 6.14. Beautiful. And there we've got our hem. We'll repeat it on the other side. We'll come along and we'll say move copy. Select these faces and drag it along and say 6.14 and click OK. And now we've got M's. Now the real test. Ooh, do, do they do they flat pattern? Let's find out. We'll say sheet metal, and we'll click here, create flat pattern. And for the stationary face, we'll pick the lower face and click OK. And hey, we got we got we got M's. Who needs real tools? We can make our own tools. We'll click finish flat pattern, and we'll do the same. Now I'm going to just uh, breeze through this one this time, um, and just uh, if you uh, want to slow it down, you're welcome to. But we'll just breeze to it because it's the same thing again. Make a flange here and here. We'll put in override rules, bend override 0 0.5. And for the height, we'll say 10 mil. Good stuff. And repeat it on the other side. Flange here and here. And we'll say in there, 5 mil. And again, bend override 0 0.5 mil. Looking good. And we'll do our move trick where we'll go along, come to the solid tab, click move. Select our faces, whoops, select our faces using window and drag it in negative 6.14 mil. And the other side, move it in 6.14 mil. Hey, looks pretty good, looks good, looks good, looks good. Okay, um, so we'll go ahead and we will see, just make sure that it flat patterns, very, very important. Hey, okay, good, 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 we've got our hem. Okay. So next, what we're going to do is model up this little hat on the top. Now, a few quirks about this is that it comes up and over with a little bit of clearance there. Um, and it's also a little bit wider than the rest. So we have to add in some meat. But there is a little bit of housekeeping that we need to do before we continue. Our move trick that we used to create those hems has created some artifact faces. So you might spot them here as like an arbitrary edge there. To get rid of them, all you need to do is select them and delete them. This is important if you want to create flanges on those faces. So select and delete. Easy. Okay, so then it's just as we did before. We'll click flange and we'll pick this upper edge here. And you'll find that if we drag it in, it will, um, it will, uh, how do you say, impinge on these. So make sure that you pick for the bend position, click adjacent. So it's above. Nice. And for the height, we'll click 15 millimeters. Good stuff. And then very, very mundane stuff. We're just going to go ahead and we're going to make some extrusions on the side here. So we'll create a sketch, uh, hit cr uh, project, include to pick that uh, face there. Click finish sketch and extrude it out six millimeters. 
and repeat it on the other side. We'll say create no, sketch on that surface. P for project geometry. Click that face, finish the sketch, and extrude that out six millimeters. All right, good stuff, good stuff. Now, always, always, always make sure that it flat patterns. So we'll come along here, say create flat pattern, pick the bottom face there, and hey, hallelujah. All right, so there we go. We've got flat pattern. All right, so let's go ahead and all that's left to do is add in the rounding in the slots. So uh, I wouldn't trust my memory today. Let's go ahead, we'll measure that. It's 1.8 wide and uh, eight mil uh, long and it's four mil from the front. So we'll go along, create a sketch on the top here, and we'll make a rectangle. We'll just put it down arbitrarily, give it some dimensions, 1.8 wide, eight mil long, and we will vertically align it. Ah, I got a lazier way of doing this. We'll say line, pick a line from there to the front there, select it, and we'll make it vertical, <laughs> horizontal. <laughs> Fusion 360 has got it in for me today. We'll drag this closer to the vertical, click the line and make it vertical. And for good measure, we'll make it uh, construction by hitting X and add a dimension to that line. We'll say four mil. Click finish sketch. And now we'll extrude that as a cut to the other side. Looking good. Great, next we've got the slot on the bottom. So we'll go ahead, we'll make a slot. We'll say sketch on the bottom and we'll say create here uh, slot and here we've got the uh, overall slot wonderful so we'll put a slot uh, it is 91.25 mil long and its width is 6.4 mil and the distance to the end there is 6.8 mil was it 6.4 mil wide 6.4 mil wide yeah all right cool uh dimension there 6.8 and again, we want to align it vertically with the middle. So I'm gonna do my lazy approach. We'll say line from the end there to the midpoint there, make a construction by selecting it and right clicking uh, and clicking X or clicking here. Uh, where is it? Construction, there it is, construction. And make it vertical using a constraint. Great. Um, and we'll just make sure that it's fully constrained, apparently it's not. Oh, we never specified a length. Here we go, it was 91.25. Great. Finish sketch and we'll extrude that through. Good stuff. And now uh, all that's left to do is the little roundings, easy. So we'll add some fillets. We've got three millimeter fillets here on the front. We'll say three there. Add another set, it's two on the side here, whoop, two, and one more at the back, one mil and one mil. Hey, now we've got our part. So, uh, cool, we'll make sure that it can flat pattern, so we'll come here to flat pattern, click the little activate flat pattern button, and there we go, we've got our, our flat pattern. So, what do we do from here? We've got a flat pattern, so what? Um, what it's useful to do is to export a DXF file. Um, so there are two ways of doing this. Uh, the first way is the official way, and the second way is the unofficial but more robust way. Um, so here we'll click, uh, uh, we'll make sure that we're in flat pattern. So we'll click flat pattern, click activate. And you can come along here and click export flat pattern as DXF. You can say convert splines to polylines, um, click OK. And then you can export your uh, flat pattern. So we'll say, here we go. We'll say uh, sheet metal rail fusion 360A. Great. However, I've found that sometimes the DXFs that get exported from that method uh, sometimes are missing the bend lines. Um, so I find that it's actually useful to do this. Create a sketch on uh, this face here. And now do the following. Click project, uh, create project and now pick this face here but also pick each bend line four five six seven eight nine ten there we go and click okay so what you'll get is a sketch i'll just hide the body so you can see it it's a sketch that has all the bend lines and the outline oops i didn't uh oh, that's why we always check i didn't project the entire face so make that body visible 
click, make that body visible, click project, click the face and it'll pick the outline. Great. Um, and if you did things right, you will end up with a sketch that looks like that with all the bend lines and that will always work. So we'll expand out sketches, uh, right click uh, sketch one and say save as DXF and we'll say cheap metal rail fusion 360 B. So just in case. Lovely. Okay, cool. So that's the DXF uh, that can be cut on a laser. We're going to make a drawing of this. So we'll hit save and next we'll come along from design to drawing and click from design. Um, now we've got two different representations to choose from the folded model or the flat pattern. We'll just say folded model uh, for the template. We'll pick uh, the template that you've decided and now we'll click OK. And we go through the usual motions of creating a drawing, which is the most fun part of 3D modeling. I love drawing. Drawing's the best. <laughs> Sarcasm aside, we'll go ahead and make, make our drawing. We'll, uh, we'll place down a view. We'll say top. No, we'll say front. We'll say front. There we go. We've got front view, uh, projected views. There we go. Place down a couple of views. Yep, good. Place down some incredibly riveting dimensions. Good stuff. Good stuff. Each dimension more interesting than the last. Oh, wow. I love drawing. Um, good, excellent, wonderful. Make this um, shaded so that it's a bit easier to see. Great. So we've got a uh, drawing that shows some of the major dimensions of it. Now, in your work, you should probably do a better job than this because, hey, well, this drawing's pretty mediocre. All right. But we, what we really want to do is have a second drawing that shows the flat pattern and shows where the folds are and how they are. So we'll go ahead and click uh, quick add. And here we'll place down another base view. Place down our base view and this time change the representation from folded model to flat pattern. And I'll make it nice and big for the sake of the video. Here we go. Click OK. And here we've got our flat pattern. We'll come and click tables and click general table in the corner there. Automatic should bring in the, um, uh, the bend. The bends. Uh, so here we've got the bend numbers and also the angle and radius. Now, um, as before with Inventor, we'll go ahead and we'll put in our dimensions. So make sure that you uh, convey where each of these bends are. Uh, very, very important for this kind of drawing. Um, and you'll also generally want to include the overall dimensions of the part because that DXF file that we um, made earlier, uh, they need to know what scale um, it is. So if you know the overall dimensions of something, then it is um, possible to scale the DXF to the right size. So not the greatest drawing, but then again, it's sufficient. Lovely. Okay, so that wraps up our episode. I hope you learned a little thing about uh, sheet metal in Inventor and Fusion 360 and something about drawing. So I'll see you next episode. Thank you for tuning in. If you liked the episode, give it a like, give it a subscribe, share it with your friends. And I'll see you next episode. Bye.